tell you, from the first time I went on the air with Wolfman Jack, I did tremendous with it. I mean, it was an instant success. I mean, uh, the first night I went on the air, I know uh, we ran mail order record spots and stuff, and I think two days later I collected like four or five thousand pieces of mail. And that was the first night on the air, no promotion, no nothing. You know, the station just had such a phenomenal signal, it covered all those people. While the Wolfman was successful over XERF, not everyone was happy with his control of the station. There was a big shootout. When I, when I showed up on the scene, there was union problems, you know, and, uh, and there was one group of people that was messing over another group of people, and I came along and, and gave the depressed people a chance to equalize the situation because mm-hmm. I had a few dollars, and we... And there was a thing where the, the station was in receivership and we had to send in and get a new receiver from Mexico City and uh, put the thing back in order again. And there was some folks got mad at that and came out in the middle of the night, you know, and circled the place. And it was a big shootout. See, the station was way out in the boondocks past uh, Via Cunha, past Del Rio. It's like 10 miles outside in the, in, in, in the boondocks. I mean, I'm talking about no roads. Well, the reason for the, the immense power was because uh, there was an agreement between the United States, Canada, and Mexico that said that uh, the United States can have so many clear channels on the AM, mm-hmm. Mexico can have so many, Canada can have so many. So Mexico and Canada wound up with just about five or six each, and the United States wound up with 51. So that's why they gave unlimited power to those big Mexican stations. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be on there from midnight to four in the morning, hawking mail order record packages and things like that, playing the down-home <laughs> blues, you know, and, and getting down in the middle of the night and everything. So baby chicks, so mail order record packages, more weight, less weight. I even had a little little product I called Florex that I made a deal with some uh, pharmaceutical company in in, uh, in in Mexico City, and we and we sold these little sugar pills for the FTC put us away, you know. And these little sugar pills were supposed to stimulate your sexual life, you understand? I mean, if you weren't making it, uh, you take one of these Florex pills, and man, you were doing it then. Well, we advertised Florex. I remember for about three months, and. Uh, Tremendous response. I mean, people were just ordering it like it was going on a style. Never heard anything like this before. I could see guys, you know, getting a, th- a bottle of 300 pills and downing the whole thing, <laughs> chasing after everybody in town, right? It really didn't do anything to stimulate you, but the psychological thing made it work. As they had during Radio's Golden Age, the Mexican X stations of the 1960s continued to peddle sex and salvation, oftentimes side by side. I, of course, I was nailing them for all the money I could get, too, you know? But then I, after I was with it for a while and I, and I got around the whole situation, I found out that nobody was really ripping anybody off because you can't really rip anybody off in a situation like that. Either they're gonna, you're doing something for them or you're not doing something for them. And if you are doing something for them, you're going to send you some money.